today's episode we're going to review what took place on Choco Pro 230 as you know there was only one match that involved a tag team it follows up to what happened in Mei Shiruga's fourth anniversary Apple and Crew when Mao decided to show up also day 10 of New Japan Pro Wrestling Best of the Super Juniors we're going to see who most likely will make it all the way to the event or if there's any other changes taking place. And also on the news updates, something is going on with MJF. Reports are coming in that he did not bother showing up at FanFest. And also I did mention if I get the chance to see Stardom, um, Flashing Champions. However, I want to apologize for that. I did not see the whole thing. I only saw all the way to Goddess Tag, uh, the Goddess of Stardom t uh, Tag Team Champions ship where I completely fall asleep. But I will review that uh, event at another time. But right now, let's get started with another episode of the Weeded Wrestle Zone. Everybody to deleted wrestle zone all things that it's pro wrestling with AEW NXT New Japan Pro Wrestling Impact Wrestling the National Wrestling Alliance various promotions wrestlers matches and championships I am your host Jay Rodier so let's begin with Choco Pro 230 now like I said before this is only a one match only no time limit we have a tag team match we got in one corner one half of Dragon Ninja, John Chiru, teaming up with one half of the Asian Dream Tag Team Champions and a member of CDK, Masahiro Takanashi, taking on our very own Super Asia Champion, Balinaki, and Mao. Now, how did this whole thing start? Well, I did not witness the Gatamu's um, May Shuruga 4th Anniversary Apple and Crew show. Now I heard that that video will be uploaded. That event will be uploaded on YouTube on June fourth. Hopefully, I get the chance to see it. Uh, from my understanding, Mao showed up when the Capacozo brothers, out of nowhere, attacked the the roster for Got to Move for no apparent reason or whoever. If Ayako ha Haru made the order to attack, but Haho Mao decided to save the day. So it was very strange that that happened. But uh, this is the first time I believe Maho actually in her, um, has ever been in the involved in the uh, course in the Chocolate Square. But if you guys know, he and Chris Brooks were par are part of DDT along with uh, Masa. But I don't know what was the deal. But the match was pretty insane. I mean, what I did like about this match is Maho, how he is very crafty, very, how do I say, tries to look for ways to outsmart his opponents, despite the fact that he's a different type of wrestler that we see normally in anybody like Balinaki or Masa or Pachon or possibly Antonio Honda, I don't know, but he was very crafty, not to mention, they use the basketball, the same kind of basketball that, of course, Mitch Ruga uses, he uses that and whack right in the, in the abdomen on John Chido for that pretending it's basketball and not to mention they took the fight outside as well as you know they had to keep quiet because they don't want to disturb the neighbors but it was practically insane now you probably asked me who was in fact in charge of the ref oh that's simple the one person who was refereeing is May Shruga now ba basically it, as you know May Shruga She's good as a ref, but sometimes she loses control or she gets picked on by the by the wrestlers themselves. So, the way it happened, she just let it 
run out of control. Did whatever. But it was Balinaki who picked up the victory by pinning John Chiru. So basically, they gave in the victory. However, now it, this was a very short um, team, mat, like a one match only. Normally, if it's a tag team, they only have two matches for the Jackon tournament. So we have that. But if it's only for one match for a singles competition, it's normally two. One match with two people. So, of course, we had um, um, Balinaki taking on Masa. Balinaki lost. John Chiru lost against Mao. But it was Maho who won the chocolate. So I don't know if we'll ever see him return back again with Choco Pro for another match. I don't know. I would like to see him. Like I said, he's very crafty in the chocolate square. However, out of the blue, guess who decided to show up? I'm talking about, of course, Miyako Haru, the agent of Uma. I don't know what's her deal. I thought that the Kapakosos were going to show up and attack everybody like normally. But no. I don't know what they said. Balinaki did not give a translation. Translation. I wish they could have translated what she was talking about. Because it would have been a lot easier for us fans, including myself, to understand what is she saying in Japanese. I'm assuming that, they're, that she's not done to obtain... The Asian Dream Tag Team Titles. That was the goal the last time when Kappa Kozo and Sayaka were challenging CDK for them. But I'm going to assume that's for another time or they'll schedule that at another time. Because, however, the following day, number 231 will be the season finale. And it's also the best bro's birthday. Yes, folks? It's the best bow's birthdays. However, Masa, who is the booker, said it's going to be the best bros versus five teams in a gauntlet match. Yes, a gauntlet match. You probably can say this the last time they did this, the best bros did not make it all the way to the end. They lost completely. But the real question is, could they finally pull it off? But the one person who seems excited for it is Mei Shuruga. Now, I can say she's crazy, but she's not. She knows what she's doing. You know she's very crafty, tries to sneak things around. That's why I call her the little slide devil, because she likes to do things very, very evil. But that's until the following day, but also the season finale. Right now, let's move on with... New Japan Pro Wrestling, best of the Super Juniors. Okay, our last review is the best of the Super Juniors with New Japan Pro Wrestling. We're in day 10. Now we're getting closer and closer to the end. But right now, let's see what we have here. Opening, our first two opening matches were part of the Block A. First match is Francesco Akira versus Yoshinobu Kanemaru. Now, as you know, during the as you know from the time, um, Francesco started strong, but somewhere down the line he actually was sinking. But he was able to get back on track because he was in the danger zone. You know, because if you don't get enough points, you're out. But he is facing a veteran in the game. I'm talking about Kanemaru. We know he's that good. But however, he was smart enough to attack Akira's knee to wore him out. But however, it did not waver Akira. He's determined to make it all the way through. Because his biggest accomplishment is to become the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. But however, it was the fireball <coughs> that put away Kanemaru. Giving him two points. So... As you know, Kanemaru only has five losses and two wins with four points. Now, I'm not sure yet if he's still out or not. But as for Kara, he has three wins and four losses. That'll be with six points. So he may still make it alive, but we don't know for sure if he has enough points to make it through. <coughs> now, our next match, we have Clark Connors. Versus Taiji Shimuri. Now keep in mind, Ishimuri has not been 
on his game, he already lost two big matches. One to, um, oh, what's his name? To Doiki and the other to Kanemaru. But this time he's facing someone who may not be much of a threat. But he was able to pull off the, the submission move onto Clark Connors, giving him two points. So Taiji Shimuri has currently five wins and two losses with a total points of ten. So he's good. He can make it all the way through. As for Clark Connors, well, from my perspective, he has about six points with three wins and four losses. So he could be, we don't know for sure if he'll make it through, but we'll see from that. Now let's jump into one match in the Block B section. Bushi versus Titan. Now, I wasn't too much pump on this match because, you know, they're almost because these guys are wearing masks, all this and that. Because Titan, he had haven't had a good luck like, having good matches the entire time. So, but he was able to pick up a very good victory on Bushi. I was that was the biggest upset because Bushi is much of the veteran. This is his tenth time being in the best of the super juniors. So in the in the point system, Bushi only has three wins and four losses with a total point of six. As for Titan, he only has two wins and five losses with four points. No. But he's normally out of the tournament due to the fact that he did not pass through previous times. Now back to our block A, we have Yo versus Ryosuke Taguchi. Now we know Yo had a big win against Hiromu Takahashi. <coughs> but does he can maintain the fire that he has? That's the obvious question. But however, he has to pay attention to Taguchi, who recently we've been seeing he's pulling his pants down, showing his bare butt on everybody, especially putting it in everybody's faces. So basically, that was the end of it with Yo with that move. And basically, Yo Taguchi got away with that. So, however, uh, Yo only has three wins and four losses with 12 points of six. So he may be at the border or so. I'm not sure. As for Taguchi, same thing. Um, he may have uh, two wins and five losses with the total points of four. So he may be out right now, but he at least, I don't know how, how much he'll be finished. But right now, let's move on. Now, our next match is Sho versus Azos. And this was a match that I like to consider it was possibly one of the biggest challenges for Azos tonight. We know that he had at least two losses one with Haramu and the other with I forgot who it was but anyway show as you know he's the guy that he had to, he has to keep his eye out show took this his fight outside the ring to to soften him up even the trade card did not work but however like always show is very using cut corners to ensure the sheet and he pulled off the shock arrow right on him to win the match I'm not sure if Sho has any interest in challenging for the X Division title from IS Austin. But here's the sh point system. Sho only has four wins and three losses with a total point of eight. As for Ace Austin, he has five wins and two losses with total points of ten. So he's good for now. Now, our next three matches are part of the block B. We have... Wheeler Yuta versus Master Watu. Now, I think this is the first time these two have countered each other before. Um, I thought the match was pretty interesting. But, however, with the Wheeler Yuta, who is very, you know, innovative, doing submission tactics and all this, helps him around. But it was the seatbelt that sealed the deal to pin Watu. So, he gets right now with, I believe... With four wins and three losses with a total points of eight. As for Master Watto, he only has two wins and five losses with a total points of four. So, we'll see about that. I don't know if he's still alive or not, but we'll, I'll keep following soon enough. Our next match is Phantasmo versus TJP. Now, we know TJP is very crafty. Even he looks ways to try to win his matches. But when it comes to Phantasmo, after his big loss... But a big match that he had with Robbie Eagles the, the previous day was amazing. But the real question was, can TJP walk out of this one? Because we know Phantasma will find ways to get out of it. But of course, it was this 
the CR2 that sealed the deal, giving him the win. So Phantasmo currently has five wins and two um, and two losses with total points of 10. So he's still alive in the moment. As for TJP, only three wins and four losses with total points of six. So he, I don't know about him yet, but we'll get to that. Ne <coughs> Next match. This is one of the three uh, wrestlers that Robbie Eagles hasn't even faced before. We got El Linda Man. I have to say this was a very interesting match because he's never faced El Linda Man before. But this was a big challenge for him. But it was the Ron Miller special that sealed the deal with El Linda Man and forced him to tap out. Giving him, I believe... Uh, the to with four wins and three losses with total points of, of eight. As for Ill in the man, well, he has currently four wins and three losses with eight points. So they're both tied at the moment. But we'll see what happens the following day. Now our next match, we have <coughs> Alex Zane, the sauce, taking on the time bomb, Hiromu Takahashi. This was a very interesting match because, as you know, Hiromu, he is crazy. He does innovative offense. I don't know. And Alex Zane does the same thing. But the only difference is he does a little different. <coughs> but it was the the Phantom Driver that picked up the, <coughs> the Valley Driver to seal the deal for him. Pick, no. <coughs> it was the figure four leg lock that sealed the deal for him against Alex Zane picking up the victory. So, Hiramu right now has um, four wins and three losses with the total points of eight. Alex Zane, I believe, has the same thing. Four wins and three losses, eight points. Now, this one is a match of a lifetime, a showdown between two teammates. Doiki and El Desperado of Suzuki Goo. Now, Kevin Kelly mentioned at the start of the tournament that El Desperado doesn't consider him as a bad dog. He called him that he's nothing but a bitch because he hasn't won a single match. But I like to say that he has done pretty good for himself in this tournament. I mean, I was impressed by his matches that he had. Not to mention... It was very interesting how he picked up those good matches. But I have to say, Doiki put up a hell of a fight no matter what. Even if Desperado is considered the best of the best. I felt bad for Taichi, who was close friends with those two guys. He has to watch it at the commentaries section. I mean, I know it's hard for him to root one or the other. But I'm sure he was biased in the entire time. But it was... El Desperado with the Pinche Loco that sealed the deal for him. And I'm sure this whole match was very emotional for both men, even though if they don't like each other, because during times in tag teams, Doki will not even look at him or try to interact with him. But I have to say, Doki did pretty well in this tournament. But how did they do in the point system? Well, Desperado currently has five wins and two losses with the total points of 10. As for Doiki, three wins and four losses, six points. Now, I have to say, he did a lot more better than last year, but that's how it goes. But I'm not sure if he's safe or not. We'll find out the following day. So I think that's pretty much it with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Now it's time to talk about certain situations that's been happening with AW at the Fan Fest. know we have double or nothing by AEW coming up soon the following day on 29th of may however certain things have now becoming very strangely reports are coming out about samoa joe 
even though I was supposed to talk about MJF, well, they kind of relate on both. Samoa Joe, for unapparent reason, did not show up at the at, at the AEW Fan Fest. Now, there is still unknown indication why. So, I cannot speculate on that. Now, MJF, on the other hand, that's a different story. MJF didn't even bother showing up with a, at the AEW Fan Fest. It didn't make no absolute sense why. However, it was no secret that he's been frustrated in the backstage with AEW officials. Because as you know, uh, in two years' time, he will be... He did not resign. It will not resign with AEW. There are signs and indications he will jump ship to WWE. But however, we don't know what's the extent. But there's a report that's kind of been conflicting, saying that AEW has sent him home. And we're like, what? The obvious question is, what's going to happen with the match with him and Wardlow? Is that match going to be canceled? That is the obvious thing we got to uh, kind of think about. Now, it's still no word why, but if there is, I'll, I'll pass it on as soon as possible. So, I think that's pretty much it. What we got for AEW Dynam with the AEW stuff on the news updates. So, let's just end it right here. Okay, I hope everybody enjoys this episode because, you know, I kept it short. And right now, I'm uh, the next episode is going to feature NWA USA. AEW Dark, a very special one that goes up to an hour, and of course, New Japan Strong with more on Mutiny. If there's anything else, I'll pass it on as soon as possible. So for right now, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang!